What's up guys? So Fifty Shades Free, this is the final film in the Fifty Shades trilogy. And if you've seen my reviews for the first two films, you know that I don't like them. I don't think they're good movies. I think that the first one is a really bad film, and I think the second one is even worse. Uh, and this one, uh, it, it pretty much takes place right after the, the second one, a little bit after, I guess, there was an engagement between the two, uh, you know, Christian and Anna, played by Jamie Dornan and Dakota Johnson. They got engaged, which I totally forgot until I was reminded at the beginning of the film, because there's a montage, there's a marriage sequence. And uh, right when the movie starts, the dialogue that you have to listen to is cringeworthy. Uh, it's like they just, they start talking. <laughs> and right when they start talking, it's an issue. Because I'm listening, I'm like, okay, well, okay. And then she keeps saying her wedding vows, and it's like they're the cheesiest things on the face of the earth. Uh, for me, anyway, and I was just like, oh, man, okay, and then he starts talking, it's like, okay, the title appears, whatever, they, they have this little montage, whatever, the music plays, she, uh, the, oh, my God, okay. I didn't like this movie, <laughs> and, um, I went into it with an open mind, like I went into the, to the first two, even though I kind of knew what I was getting into, I always hoped to see a good movie. And like I said, right from when it starts, the dialogue is so bad. The screenplay to this movie is so bad because this movie doesn't really know what it wants to be. It doesn't. I mean, they're picking at things that they could try to grab to make dramatic and to make exciting or suspenseful, and they fail ridiculously. The first movie was, was uh, like, the sex aspect of it was, was, like, one of the lead things of the movie. The second one, it kind of was diminished because there was a lot of other stupid crap going on with really ridiculous stuff that was happening in the second movie, people stalking him, and just a lot of nonsense. That movie was nonsense, and, uh, well, they're all nonsense. And now this one, they're picking at things that happened in the past movies to try, because they don't have anything else. They have nothing else to add to the table. And if you've seen the second film, you'll remember that uh, when she was at her job, uh, her old boss, I guess, uh, liked her quite a bit, and uh, all of a sudden, this big, uh, this you know, head of this head of the company, this boss, whatever he was, uh, tries to sexually assault her in the office or whatever. Uh, but but he knows that she's with Christian, and he really likes her, so he's going to you know, try to seduce her in the office, and all that happens, and I guess he was uh, sent to jail for sexual harassment or something along the lines, and this film, uh, they kind of try to focus on that, you know, it, it keeps coming back up, like that's the thing that they keep going back to, because if he gets out of jail, you know, he's, he's searching for them, he's, he's after them, what's going to happen, you know, uh, they, they, tr like, it's really ridiculous, like, I, I don't know why this guy would, like, he's, these characters are stupid, like, I'm not even going to talk about it, if you've seen the movie, you know that the bad guy of the movie is ridiculous, why is he still, con con like, trying to, to, you know, mess up his life, if he just got out on bail, why is he trying to do all these, he, he does something, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie is where they try to get you, like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen, because they have nothing else. The film is also intertwined with how, uh, you know, they're married now, and uh, they're, they're trying to get a new home, and but there's an architect because they want to tear the one home down and rebuild it, but she likes it the way it is, but the chick, I guess, you know, she's really attractive, and she's touching on Christian and everything, and he leaves, and, you know, there's that whole bit in the trailer where, where she's like, oh, you may call me Mrs. Gray, you know, blah, 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 don't touch him, and, and all this stuff. And then that character is supposed to be relevant again, because they're supposed to be, like, uh, Christian's brother or whatever. I don't even know, honestly, is... Uh, having an affair with her, not really an affair, but they're together or something. Maybe it is an affair. I didn't care enough because the movie is not written for me to be like, wow, this is really compelling. They just keep throwing crap at the screen and hoping that it sticks. I mean, the only good things about this film, Danny Elfman's score. I've said that the past two times. Danny Elfman, I, was, I feel so bad for him that he had to do the music to these movies. But the music, the score is fine. 
And I think Dakota Johnson and, and uh, Jamie Dornan, I think that their performances aren't great, but I think they're the best that they've been uh, so far or at all because of the, you know, this is the end of it, and I think this is the best they've been for all of the films. Even though I don't think they're great, they are trying with what they have, uh, which is a horrible, horrible screenplay, a horrible direction, horrible bland direction. This movie's bland, it's dull, there's nothing to it. You don't, you're just watching it like, okay, why do I care about anything I'm watching right now? Because it's ridiculous, I don't care. And the sex is, is still, you know, you, you don't care about it, you watch it, the music starts to play, you know. It's not, it's not like sexy sex, you know, it's like, it's like you watch it and it's like a bad music video. You know, just like it's always been. There's nothing new. There's nothing original in this film. It is the same. All of these, it's like a carbon copy of the other. All these three movies, they're like, you know, all the same. They're all equally just bad. Give the first one one and a half. Give the first one one. Gonna give this one one and a half out of five stars. Uh, I think this might be the, the best of the three, but that's not saying much because the movie's still ridiculous. I mean, there's, there's uh, you know, another side plot where we see in the trailers that, that uh, you know, she's pregnant. Uh, that's wasted in the film. It's just another thing to be like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. But everything's fine at the end of the day. You don't care, and uh, that's it. You get a happy ending, and it's like whatever. And the movie wraps up so similar to how Twilight wrapped up. You know, how they're sitting in the... The, the meadow or whatever, and uh, you get that, like, that it's like a music video of a montage of all the other movies. Uh, this is the same thing. And it's like, you have to show that because you have nothing else to end this film on that's going to be satisfying. So, that's going to be appealing to audiences, I guess. I don't know. I'm not buying it. And that's my rating, one and a half. Guys, do you plan on seeing Fifty Shades Freed? Uh, what do you think about it? If you did see it, what do you think of this series? I am so happy that these movies are over. Uh, you know, this is just, it's, it's trash. You know, it's just, it's trashy filmmaking. That's, that's all it is. It's, it's ridiculous, and uh, you could tell everybody was getting their paycheck on this one. Guys, yeah, so you can also subscribe to this channel. I'm going to be trying to see Peter Rabbit, a uh, new release that just came out this weekend as well. Uh, the 1517 to, to Paris, I believe the film is called. I don't think I'm going to be able to see that one. Uh, so you probably shouldn't expect a review for that. Uh, next week, you got Black Panther coming out. I'm very excited to see that. Uh, hoping for a good one. The reviews have been great. Uh, and also at the end of the month, I believe the last Tuesday of the month, with, w month which is the 27th, you'll be getting three unboxings for three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri and Coco, which I believe will be on 4K, both of them and the Blu-ray combo pack unboxing of Darkest Hour. Uh, so that is all very exciting, guys. That's been it. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links to those are in the description of this video. And thank you very much for watching my review for Fifty Shades Freed. Over and out.